Hello, this is a short video that shows some recent enhancements we made to the Leverage Point value modeling tool. We're really confident that these enhancements are sure to please power users as well as any new user who is building their very first value model. Now, during this demo, I want to focus on two key enhancements. The first one is how it makes it easier to work with different units of measure. And secondly, provides a more convenient way to enter pricing for your offering and competitive alternative. So let me show you how this works. The big news here is that we added a brand new tab called Units and Prices. It's a new tab too. Sits between the old start and benefits tab in the value modeling tool. Now the purpose of this tab is to define the units of measure for the competitor price and for your offering price. A price unit of measure is sometimes referred to as a pricing metric. And this simply describes how a particular product or service is sold. So for example, you could sell products by the pound, by the barrel, per month, and so on. Now, when you open this tab for the first time, you'll see that the competitor and offering name you entered in tab one is copied over. So now we're gonna start with the competitor. We know that the competitor sells its product by the pound, so I would simply type in pound into this field. Now, if you already know the price per pound for the competitor, you can enter that too, but it's perfectly okay to leave that field blank if you don't have that information. What's more important at this step is to define the unit of measure. In this case, I do know that the competitor charges $11 per pound, so I'm gonna type that in. Notice that when I do that, a price component is automatically created below. And price components give you tremendous flexibility. So for instance, I may want to add another price component to this competitor solution. So you'll notice I'll just add custom here. And this works very much like a value driver. Um, you can input a value or you can create a calculation with, with variables and, and a formula. But in this case, I'm just going to add a custom value of $1.25 per pound. And like a value driver, I can rename this as appropriate. So let me call this NBCA material 2. And I'll click OK. And now you'll notice that the total is now 1225 and you'll also notice that it's grayed because it's a it's a formula and it's simply the sum of these two price components now let's work on the pricing for your offering on the right side of the screen again it's not required to enter a price for your offering at this time and this is certainly true in the case of future products where the price hasn't been decided yet on the other hand, there are certainly situations where you do have a price, say for an existing product. If that's the case, you now have a place to enter that price inside the value modeling tool. So let me enter $13.50 per pound for my offering. Again, a price component is created below and by the way, if I wanted to, I can give this a different pricing metric than the competitor. So for example, I could have put kilograms in here instead of pounds. But for this example, I'm gonna keep it simple and use per pounds for both. And, and in a later uh, demo, we're going to show how to handle these more complex uh, situations. Okay, so now that we're done with the units and prices tab, I wanna take a step back and show you the start tab because we've streamlined this a bit. Just as before, you start your value model in tab one by answering these three basic questions. What are you selling? Who are you selling to? And who is the competitive alternative? But now we've added a new field called customer unit or customer unit of measure. And usually this is a key performance indicator or KPI for that customer. So some examples of customer KPI I units could be uh, per finished goods are used with OEMs in the agricultural business per acre is a common uh, customer unit construction industry uses per square foot and so on 
uh, per year is often a good generic KPI. And so I'm going to enter that one in for our example. We added this new field because previously it was a bit cumbersome to add customer units of measures in leverage point. And we redesigned this tab to make sure that no one misses this important step because as any experienced value modeler knows, it's very difficult to quantify customer value without a good customer metric. Plus, we realize that it really helps to clearly distinguish customer units of measures from pricing metrics. So with an improved tab one and a new tab two, we expect that you'll have a much easier time and better user experience with value models. Now next, I'd like to show you how we updated the units and currency dialog, which is found up here in the more button. Um, so see that we've um, organized the, the different units of measure uh, into three sections. We have our customer units of measure, we have our competitor units of measure, and we have our offering units of measure. And of course, I can have alternative uh, customer units as well. In this case, notice that we have a year, um, but we also have a month. So one year equals 12 months. And you use this dialogue to manage all your various units of measures in your model. So you can select the best one for any value uh, formula or price component. And as you can see, one advantage of setting up all these different units of measure is now you can display um, your value model in any one of a number of units of uh, measure and all the calculations are converted properly. So this concludes uh, the demonstration. We look forward to hearing your feedback as you try out this new functionality and look for other video demos like this in the near future. So thanks for watching.